Hey everyone, the name is Eric Doran. Yeah, through this I've come to realize something about myself recently. In discovering the Enneagram instincts, I started uncovering and researching the self-preservation type, the sexual instinct, and the social orientation. I tried to understand these three instincts because I wanted to understand how they related to me and to my personal state and to who I was. And here I came to realize, in a sense, that my strongest instinct was the self-preservation instinct. And in this, I kind of realized that uh, the instincts were more important than I had previously thought. I feel often the research on the instincts in the Enneagram is so underdeveloped. True this, the instincts relate to, for example, how you feel, if you feel comfortable, if you feel safe, if you feel secure, if you feel insecure, if you feel uncomfortable. True this, if you feel uncomfortable, if you feel in a situation that I'm not comfortable here, I don't feel safe here, that is the, rep the representation of the instincts. The instincts are super important. We feel and we relate to the question of comfort, security, all the time. Now, the instincts are important to understand in relation to the gut. True, there's a person that has strong senses of instincts, like is strongly comfortable, has this strong need for remaining safe and secure, tends to, at some extent, repress their gut. The gut center, the gut types, the 8, 9, and the 1, are usually all about what we want, what we desire, what we need. Do I feel that I have what I want? Do I feel that I don't have what I want? Do I feel that I have power? Do I feel that I lack power? Is there something I desire that I don't have? Is there something right now that I want that I can't get? Uh, often the instinct types, like the self-preserving sexual and social types, or all about maintaining and finding comfort and often that requires them to give up to some extent that kind of power, giving up to some extent their desire or putting aside their desire or what they want so that they can remain safe and so that they can remain secure. Here I feel often we need to understand that the instincts should be a natural part of the Enneagram. They should be added with alongside the other nine Enneagram types because they represent real people, real struggles, real traumas that we can all have. You met plenty of people that share these struggles. You met people that struggle with the self-preservation instinct, people that struggle with the social orientation, and people that struggle with the sexual orientation. And if you have one above the other, every one of us has one above the others. Now, for me personally, it is the self-preservation instinct that is at its strongest. How do I define this type? Well, I think to some extent, at its most unhealthy, I feel that the self-preservation instinct is a little about uh, overestimating their own power, in a sense. They feel overly responsible for the things that happen around them. They feel responsible for all the ongoings of the world for peace and conflict and struggles all across the world. If there is conflict somewhere, they don't really feel at peace. The self-preservation type has this tendency to feel that everything that's happening in the world is kind of to some extent their fault, in a sense. Uh, they feel to some extent responsible for the ongoings of the universe and for maintaining harmony and balance in the world. So often the self-preservation types at their best are really peaceful types, patient types. They're open, they're rational, they're passionate, they are responsible, and often they are quite powerful in the sense that, well, if you feel responsible, you also do more. You also spend more time making sure that you're taking care of things. You spend more time reflecting on how you impact others, and you spend more time making sure that you can have a positive influence on the world. Now, typically at the most unhealthy it is that, uh, well, these kinds of, uh, this kind of over focus on how you affect the world can lead you to feeling like you're a bad person. Like when they go towards the unhealthy states, the self-preserving st types tend to fall towards, in a sense, uh, egomania or the sense that also in a sense, uh, insecurity, shame, guilt and fear in a sense of feeling, oh, it's my fault that everything is the way it is. Everything that's happening in the world is my fault. And in a sense, falling towards that uh, guilt trap, but also towards that kind of feeling like you're a bad person or feeling like you are some kind of uh, monster that's causing suffering in the world. And that's also from the egomania of like assuming that everything is about you, assuming that everything is about 
what you do but and and not realizing like that there are other forces bigger than you in the world that there are lots of things out there bigger than you so that's also something self-preservation types need to think about there is something in the world bigger than you and you are a person just like everyone else with personal desires and interests and you should not be afraid of and this is often what Carl Jung said about the magician uh, the magician archetype is the mag- archetype in Jungian in the Jungian universe that correlates the best to the self-preservation type. And the magician is the kind of person that, in a sense, uh, fears doing harm unto the world, fears using their power in an evil or malicious way, fears acting on personal desires or interests, or using their power to further their own needs rather than the needs of the world. They believe their power should only be used to maintain and uphold harmony and good in the world. They fear using their power for the wrong reason and they fear being controlled and forced to use their powers for the wrong reasons now often i associate the self-preservation types with a weak judging function or a weak perceiving function Uh, it really has all to do with the loss of control in a sense because you feel a little afraid of your own powers or a little afraid of uh, or ashamed of your own powers you tend to kind of uh, Uh, hold back your decision-making process. You hold back taking control in a situation where you should. You kind of uh, take a distance and you try to avoid getting your hands into the situation. And in doing this, you kind of become a little more towards the submissive side in the sense that you tend to um, set aside your own control and your own power. That you kind of... uh, in a sense, fall towards uh, your inferior function, your inferior perceiving function, if you're a judging type. Uh, Here it is that the judging types tend to start leaving things up to chance because they don't trust their own influence or decision-making. They leave things up to chance or to the moment. I don't dare to make a decision, so I just let chance or something beyond this from the universe decide it for me. Um, For... The perceiving type is the other way around. Uh, fear of making a decision or on, uh, making a decision on your the moment or on what you decide or what you believe in the sh- in the situation, uh, and instead submitting to an institution or to a system and letting the system decide, letting some kind of outer force of control decide for you. So in both of these instances, it's about letting go of control, while in a sense maintaining. And pursuing your interests, your values, and your dominant introverted or extroverted preference. Now, personally, often I felt that I confused this type with the two. Uh, I feel often I identified a little too much with the two. My main issue with being a two was that I did not identify with being controlling in the sense that the two can be at their worst. The two, in a sense, when stressed, can become controlling and can start inserting their own values in other people's lives. They can start saying, you should live like this, you should make this decision, you should be like that, and if you don't, I get mad at you, in a sense. The two kind of can become a little controlling when they think they know what's best. It's also that the two struggles with being a little deceptive, in a sense, self-deceptive, like not realizing your flaws or realizing your issues. Often the two's struggle with self-awareness in a sense or they don't take the time to get the self-awareness and here i felt in a sense that i'm actually quite i'm quite aware of my own flaws and my own misgivings and i am very careful not to try to control other people or to tell other people what to do i actually feel awkward in situations where i have to do that so in a sense i've uh, felt myself feeling more and more turned off the two for personal reasons uh, and uh, instead I felt myself relating a little more to the self-preservation instinct. But it should be said when talking about all the Enneagram types that none of these Enneagram types represent you. None of these Enneagram descriptions should be read as a description about you. It should be read as a description about your struggle, your issue, what you're dealing with, your traumas. It should be read when you're dealing with a trauma, when you're struggling through something. That's when you need the Enneagram. When you feel rather that you want to learn who you are, that's when you should go into the MBTI. That's when you should start studying your MBTI type, who you are at your best, what you can be at your best. Uh, The Enneagram is, in so many ways, 
a starting point for people searching for self-actualization and personal discovery, where the MTI is kind of that roadmap towards self-actualization, who you will be when you are self-actualized, when you found yourself, and when you made peace with who you are. So that's all I have to say today about the Enneagram and the MTI. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you all for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next time. By the way, I should let you all know that currently I have a sale going on in the website. So anyone who's interested in getting the books on the Enneagram, the power of persona or free typing sessions, not free actually, but very cheap Enneagram typing sessions or MBTI typing sessions. I produce reports, I produce uh, uh, all kinds of material for anyone who's uh, interested in learning more about themselves and gaining more objective information about who they are from an outsider perspective. So that's all for today. Thank you all for watching and see you guys later.